쭉 가도록 하겠습니다. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the class 745 today. Um, over the last weekend, we had a Children's Day and Mother and Father's Day. I'm sure uh, you had very good times with your family and with your friends. The weather was really nice over the weekend. And there are beautiful flowers on the mountains and gardens. I, I, love, I love the weather of early May. Uh, I'm going to continue the high speed uh, channel and jitters. Um, in this week and after that I'm going to move on to the power supply design. So the contents of the class in May in this month may be very very important and will be the core part of the class in this semester. You remember that to make an interconnection between the computers and between GPU and DRAM we have to connect the signal lines using the transmission line structures. Transmission line structures is ideal uh, interconnection structure with constant phase velocity and constant uh, propagation speed and constant impedance over a wide frequency range from DC to very high frequencies. That is the requirement of interconnection for high-speed digital uh, IOs. However, we found that because of the skin effect loss and dielectric loss of the materials that makes the transmission lines, because of the high frequency loss, we will suffer uh, eye diagram distortions and jitters. Because of eye diagram distortions, we're gonna have narrower uh, voltage margin at the receiver and smaller timing margin at the receiver. And those are very difficult tasks and challenges when we are designing the high-speed interconnections. When we are measuring the quality of interconnections with a given data rate, we usually use the eye diagram. So, in this class today, I'm going to start with the eye diagram analysis and PAM4 and jitters. You remember that our digital data has, has random data patterns. So uh, we have to be able to quantify or qualify the, your interconnection even though we have uh, random data patterns. So I diagram is a superposition of many, many uh, voltage waveform traces in a, a unit window with the different data patterns. Sometimes we have to use the data patterns of 10 to 12 or more. So usually it takes long time and computing resources to obtain the eye diagram because we have to draw the voltage waveform at the receivers uh, of many different cases of 10 to 12 different uh, cases. So let's uh, uh, to give you an idea about eye diagram, I'm going to draw uh, some eye diagram example. Let's first take a look at the case of eye diagram data pattern, which is that one, 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 and suddenly it has only zero bit, go back to one, 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 one pattern. This could be one of the worst uh, voltage traces in, a, in the eye diagram. If I draw it 
in the I in the I diagram would be this um why we have uh, th this kind of uh, a voltage waveform at the receiver because of the ISI effect because of high frequency loss. ISI is actually coming from skin effect loss at, a, at less than one gigahertz range. If the frequency is very high in the transmission line, we're gonna have mainly dielectric loss. Because of ISI effect, uh, the voltage cannot suddenly change it from high to low level. Ideal transition could be this type of waveform, but uh, because of uh, just, uh, ISI effect, uh, it's gonna have some exponential decay and suddenly because of the level one, logic level one, it has go back to the high level. Another case could be uh, data pattern two, which has zero, zero, zero data pattern, and suddenly it has only one bit has uh, level one, and then other sequences coming after one is zero, zero, zero. Then if I draw it on a I diagram, because of one bit, it is gonna go up, but because of ISI, it has an exponential Form. And then because of zero bit sequences coming after that, it has to go back to zero bit patterns. If we do not have ISI effect, and if it is a really, really uh, ideal uh, transmission line, we have to go high and we have to come back. M maybe a little bit uh, different, but schematic, uh, conceptually, it has to be this kind of window. But actually, I diagram has this kind of small I, and because of that, we're gonna have small window, I opening at for setup and hold time. So because of this I diagram uh, distortion caused by ISI, we have reduced, we have reduced voltage margin by that amount. Also, we have uh, reduced timing margin compared to unit interval. Um, that is basically uh, caused by ISI effect, and that is coming from skin effect loss and dielectric loss. You remember that, a uh, data rate requirement is constantly being increased. So we are pushed into more and more higher frequency range. And that means we're gonna suffer more and more uh, reduction of I mask. And I mean the window for setup and hold time. Also, please remember that this unit interval from here to here is being reduced to increase the data rate or also to um, reduce the power consumption and at the IO interconnection, we want to reduce the voltage level. So we also have pressure to, be, uh, to have a reduced voltage levels in addition to this ISI effect. But one thing I would like to uh, talk about at this moment is that in, in electrical circuit, we have some circuits which can amplify. So we have, for example, amplifier at the receiver. Sometimes we call it as an equalizer to compensate the voltage margin reduction. But however, in the time domain, we do not have any time amplifier. If you can design a circuit who has time amplifier or time attenuator, you will definitely will receive 
Nobel Prize. So what I'm saying is very, very difficult part of our nature is to control the timing. Voltage, sometimes we have some electronic circuit to reduce it or to amplify. It. But timing is really, really difficult to control. And with the given length of interconnection, with the dielectric constant, speed of light is always constant. That is the principle of relativity, Einstein relativity. So uh, because of that, we cannot scale down or scale up the time window. So um, in this I mask, I would say jitter, timing window is really, really important, much more crucial. That's why I'm going to repeatedly come back to jitter again when we are, talk, we are designing IO interconnections and power supply network and ground. In these days, there are two measures. There are two measures to quantify your quality of interconnection. One is EMI level, because if, if you do not have very good uh, interconnection and power ground design, you're gonna have EMI radiations and it will interfere with other analog circuits or nearby RF circuit. Second measure uh, is jitter. And the jitter is a, a final quality of final measurement of your interconnection quality and power supply. So I'm going to repeatedly come back to these jitter issues in these May lectures. Now let's take a look at another uh, random, random data pattern. That is number four. It has pattern of Logic zero, zero, one, zero, one, zero, zero. Then it will to be zero, zero, and it's gonna go up and it's gonna come back because of zero bit at the center. And because of one bit, it's gonna go up again and it's gonna come back again. And so this could be another possibility of a pattern. But please remember that we have to consider all the 10 to 12 bit case to completely draw this eye diagram. But it takes so much time when you are using the computer simulation or when you are doing the measurement. So it takes a lot of time. So there are a lot of statistical methods to uh, make an eye diagram. But now in this case, we are only consider four different cases. So much the worst case eye diagram and another data pattern is like this, number three, one, one, zero, one, zero, one, one pattern. It will start to one, one. Then because of zero bit, it may go down because of ISI, it cannot make a ideal transition. And then because the bit is going back to one again, it has to go back to one and zero bit it has to come back and it has to go back to again. So we have now four different patterns. Another important pattern is, I think number five could be all one pattern. Number six pattern could be all zero, 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 zero patterns. So in this simple uh, cases of six data patterns, I through the eye diagram in the screen. Please remember that to make a complete uh, eye diagram, we have to draw this uh, voltage waveform for many, many different cases. So because this number of bit patterns are so many, sometimes we are using statistical method to estimate or to measure the jitter and eye opening. Now I would like to focus on something in this eye diagram. This uh, yellow line is half voltage level. If we look at a point where this voltage waveform is crossing this half voltage level, actually this could be V reference level. 
uh, we have very distinctly two different points or two different points, number one and number two. Number two or crossing point is coming from a data pattern 0001000. And this number one crossing point is coming from a data pattern which is 11101, something like that. So somehow uh, these two cases are worst case of uh, I diagram voltage waveform. And we have two different, uh, distinctively a different uh, crossing point. This separation of crossing point will have strong impact to reduce the eye opening. So this separation of uh, timing to cross the half point is called jitter. Especially this jitter is called deterministic jitter. Now I'd like to make a conclusion of this slide to saying that number one, because of the ISI effect, actually ISI is generated by skin effect loss and dielectric loss. Because of ISI effect, we have a voltage waveform which affect the reduction of uh, eye opening. Third statement I would like to say to you is that because of ISI, we have distinctively two different uh, worst case eye diagram pattern and that will give us two different crossing point in the timing window that is called jitter. In conclusion, I would say ISI in a transmission line is producing jitter. Now I would like to move a little bit into this object subject. So because of the worst case uh, data patterns, two different type of data patterns, uh, timing window is reduced. And there are, in, when you are actually measuring the eye diagram, you, you, you gonna usually use the, some distinctively two different uh, waveform. Also from zero to high level, also we're gonna have some two different uh, crossing point. That kind of uh, separation, timing window separation is called deterministic jitter. Uh, is caused by hyper data dependent jitter. It is data dependent jitter. It is caused by loss effect, and sometimes it is called intersymbol interference. However, this voltage waveform itself has some Gaussian distributions because timing, this, this timing and clock itself is also generated in, in the circuit like a PLL or DLL or there is, it is basically generated by voltage controlled oscillator and voltage controlled oscillator is supported by crystal oscillator. In computer systems and in VSI circuits such as GPU and DRAM, they are generating clock using PLL type of circuit. This is generating the clock. And based on this clock, we are generating IO data pattern. So if we have jitter at PLL, it's gonna generate on IO jitters. And we believe that it has some random jitter and it has Gaussian distributions. It is generated by clock source jitter or 
or sometimes it is caused by thermal noise. At some classes in May, we're gonna talk about these random jitter issues. Anyway, uh, this jitter, clock type of jitter has random nature and it has kind of Gaussian distribution. It decays exponentially, but it never vanishes. It always has certain probabilities. Deterministic jitter is kind of bounded jitter. That means it is determined by ISI and data rate, and it has certain range. So if we uh, draw this distribution of a voltage waveform for the case of 10 to 12 or 10 to 14 different cases, it's going to have some distributions. And we're going to have this kind of distribution. The separation of peak is usually being said as deterministic jitter. And this Gaussian distribution is called as random jitter. Once again, I would like to say that eventually the uh, the quality of interconnection and quality of your IO circuits and quality of your power supply network for your IO circuit and quality of your clock circuit in your chip or in your computer will be quantified by two different uh, measurements. One is deterministic jitter and second one is the random jitter. So if you really want to be a, um, a good signal integrity or packaging or IO circuit designers, you will have to talk about or you will you have to analyze deterministic jitter and random jitter. Uh, you have to analyze it very well. And if you want to make a higher and higher uh, data rate between GPU and memory, you will have strong pressure to reduce the, this deterministic jitter and random jitter. For example, if you are designing a package for your GPU or DRAM, uh, you have to control the temperature of your system. You have to keep that certain uh, below certain levels, and then you're gonna reduce the random jitter. Uh, if your system has so much deterministic jitter, you have to control the ISI effect or power supply noise and crosstalk. So in this slide, I would like to give you some connection between I diagram and jitter. I in the I diagram, we, can, we, are, we will be able to uh, analyze the distribution of uh, crossing point of the reference level, and then you can uh, obtain the deterministic jitter and random jitter. Deterministic jitter is usually determined by interconnection designs such as uh, transmission line and power supply and something like that. And random jitter is the uh, measurement of your clock generator circuits, especially the PLN. I'm going to come back to this issue again and again. Let's go to page number three. So as I briefly introduced in uh, the previous slide, we're gonna have I diagram. So we can draw the statistical distribution description of the crossing point and we can cut, oh, let's assume that we are drawing 10 to 12 or 10 to four different random cases on an eye diagram, and we can count number of uh, data pattern which has the crossing point and number one, and then we can move one by one and we can uh, count. And then we can draw distribution graph This is the 
edge of the unit interval, ideally uh, all the all the voltage lines has to cross this point. Uh, but unfortunately, because of the terminus jitter and random jitter, uh, this reference crossing point will have certain distributions. This point is ideal point, but we're gonna have certain distributions. If we look at from the another edge of unit interval, also we can draw this probability distribution function. And this kind of graph is called bad top curve. Your system, if the, your system requirement is asking 10 to minus 12 BER, that means you are sending 10 to 12 different uh, bit, uh, different data patterns, only one bit, only one data pattern has um, crossing at this point. So, that is the requirement of your system. Then you draw this line. And then from here to here is gonna be a I diagram opening window with the given data rate. If you have less uh, deterministic jitter, you're gonna have better best of curve and you're gonna have improved best curve and you're gonna have wider eye diagram window. So our interconnection designer has to have every effort to video, to change this bad, uh, best of curve from number one to number three to number four. As I mentioned before, we have the Dominic zero component and Gaussian uh, random zero component. I would say roughly the contribution of jitter from deterministic jitter might be 50% and random jitter percent is 50%. I think um, this area is more related to circuit designer who is uh, designing the clock recovery circuits and IO circuit. And our interconnection designer has more responsibility to reduce the deterministic jitter. Um, in the school, you may not have much chance to take a look at this best of call and to discuss the jitters. But if you go to a company, semiconductor companies, and, and you may uh, spend much time to look at this type of quantifications. And you will hear more and more about deterministic jitter and random jitter and eye opening. Uh, and I start to look at this kind of subject about 20 years ago when I was working at Silicon Valley companies. Even at the time, two generations ago, they start to talk about this quite a lot. But I'm saying that in three or 10 years, you're gonna hear this kind of argument and discussions 10 times more than now. Because eventually, uh, the quality of your interconnection systems, especially if that's very good uh, requirement for AI computers and metaverse computers, and you're gonna have strong pressure to control this uh, jitter and BR. And especially this T timing D unit interval is reducing to less than 100 picosecond. So this jitter has to be less than three picosecond or one picosecond. It is maybe in 10 years later, you have to fight with femtosecond ranges, 100 femtosecond ranges. And that will be the extreme technologies. Especially if you want to control the random jitter, your VCO has to have minimal phase noise that is going to be determined by the temperature of your systems and deterministic zero is coming from power supply noise that will be covered in this class in, and also ground bounce, ground bounce and ISI. And this 
a subject quality of the subject will control the determinist jitter. And in this class of May, we're gonna come back this very, very important issues. So once again, uh, if we have probability density function of jitter that will be obtained from the eye diagram measurement or simulation, and this Gaussian uh, distribution is related to random jitter, and it never vanishes. It has certain levels it, because it is a probability. And we also have deterministic jitter. And this random jitter plus deterministic jitter, we're gonna, uh, in the deterministic random jitter, we're gonna have certain distributions. We can measure some distributions, assuming a Gaussian distribution. And this dj and rj, rj is determining from the uh, distribution, Gaussian distribution function, and this, that could be called as total jitter. Now, this is very important slide. I would like to summarize the class so far today using this slide. Please pay attention. We have total jitter. As I mentioned many times in the previous slide, we're gonna have deterministic jitter and random jitter. Usually clock system and IO circuit is contributing the random jitter and interconnection is contributing the deterministic jitter. One interesting uh, statement related to deterministic, uh, deterministic jitter is it is bounded jitter, I mean, it is a separation of peaks. And because with the given ISI effect, such as crosstalk and power supply nodes, the value of that is not infinite. It has certain finite value, depending on your interconnection design and depending on frequencies and depending on your power supply. So it is not probabilistic. It is, has certain range, peak to peak value and so we usually are saying that it is bounded jitter. On the other hand, random jitter is unbounded. It has Gaussian distribution. So and we're gonna still have very extremely rare cases of jitter. Um, random jitter, source of random jitter has, uh, number one is thermal noise. If temperature is gonna higher, you're gonna have more random jitter. So at low temperature, you're gonna have very uh, small uh, Gaussian distributions. But if you have very high temperatures, you're gonna have more broad uh, Gaussian distribution. So this means, again, temperature control of your computer system, MSMI conductor and package will be very important. Also, I know that it is related to Shan noise and flicker noise. And in some classes in this semester, our teaching assistant will come to this class and he is going to give you something about summer noise, Shan noise and flicker noise. Now let's take a look at the deterministic jitter that is more related to interconnection design. Um, uh, one thing uh, we have covered is uh, data dependent jitter and ISI. You remember that this ISI is coming from loss effect of your transmission line. Another uh, type of jitter that is data dependent is due to type cycle distortions. For example, let's assume you have IO driver, which has um, different duty cycle. Usually we are assuming high and low rate duty cycle is 50% and 50%. And however, because of the logic error or something, if the duty cycle is different, uh, when we have higher level or le low level, so we are assuming 50% and 50%, but if that is, is some variations, that is being called as duty, duty cycle distortion jitters. 
also there are another type of jitter that means the periodic jitter actually that is coming from power supply noise and we're gonna talk about it next week very intensively if there is a resonances in power supply no circuit that will be coupled to power supply of your IO circuit. So it could be a single tone, usually single tone frequency noise, power supply noise, and that will contribute to a periodic jitter. The last jitter is the another type of jitters. There are many different ways of uh, wording, but bounded on correlation jitter, and I know that it is actually coming from uh, crosstalk. So uh, in the previous slide, I, I say that without deterministic jitter, if we have, have only random jitter, jitter distribution function, uh, uh, probability distribution function may have this kind of form. But if you have random jitter and deterministic jitter, you're gonna have this kind of uh, distributions. And however, if we have all these uh, six different uh, jitter are combined together, we're going to have this kind of uh, jitter distribution, probability distribution function. Tail will be determined by random jitter, and many com different components of deterministic jitter will contribute the widening distribution of distribution function. We're going to have many uh, peaks. So if we look at you are, from the measurement and simulation, you can obtain this uh, uh, probability distribution function. And if you look at that distribution, you can determine RJ and DJ. And also you can uh, analyze the quality of interconnection. In the worst case could be number three, then it may have all these uh, deterministic jitters such as periodic jitter, data dependent jitter bounded on correlated jitters. Mission of our interconnection design is to reduce from number three cases to number one, and eventually if we can make very narrow or uh, probably jitter probability distribution function, our job will be well done. And those are the requirement of very high computing performance of AI computers. Now, uh, um, uh, Sail, are you there? Can you speak? Only Joseon Baksala Jong and Samushi is through as a bike is having and then the one with the way I kill in Gaio. There was me. Oh, so good to Jim Soft to Kugish in Gaio. Then, eh. 혹시 이 슬라이드 한번 설명 우리말로 한번 설명해 보시겠습니까? 어, 요요 아, 요번 슬라이드는 이제 교수님께서 지터가 크게 어떻게 분류가 되고 특히 이제 크게 두 분류로 랜덤 지터와 디터미니스틱 지터로 분류된다고 말씀을 해 주셨고 그 중에서도 이제 디터미니스틱 지터는 피리오딕 지터, 데이터 디펜더 지터, 그리고 바운디드 언코릴레이티드 지터 이렇게 세 종류로 크게 분류가 되면서 나누어진다라고 크게 한번 설명해 주셨고요. 랜덤 지터 같은 경우에는 이제 언바운디드 지터로서 아래에 나온 것과 같이 썰말 노이즈, 샷 노이즈, 플리프 노이즈와 같은 다양한 종류가 있다라고 크게 가닥을 잡아주시는 페이지였습니다. 네, 그리고 제가 강조하고 싶은 게 어쨌거나 물리적으로 프로세서와 메모리가 분리돼 있고 얼마나 떨어져 있느냐의 차이는 있지만 그폰 노이만 구조해서 그렇다라고 봐지고요. 양자 컴퓨터도 메모리는 없어요. 그러니까 아무리 계산을 빨리 해도 데이터 주고 받는 이 문제는 영원하리라 이렇게 보는 거예요. 근데 그 인터커넥션의 데이터를 보내는 특히 랜덤 데이터를 보내는 퀄리티의 최종적인 결정판이 저는 치터라고 보는 거예요. 중간 과정에서 아이 다이그램이 있고 트랜스퍼 펑션이 있고 여러 가지가 있겠는데 네, 그렇습니다. 그러면 왜 이렇게 지터가 중요할까라고 보면 지, 시간 축은 우리가 인간이 변화시킬 수 없기 엔지니어링 할수 없기 때문이라는 제 개인적인 철학을 갖고 있습니다. 
아까 얘기한 것처럼 볼테이지는 앰플리파이어 하면 되고 쿨링은 냉장고 붙이면 되고 막 그러는데 온도는 그런데 변수 중에 시간은 인간이 어떻게 할 수도 없더라. 시간은 뭐에서 결정되나 빛의 속도 주어진 거리가 있으면 유전 상수가 있으면 일정하기 때문이다. 그 시간은 못 그러니까 최종적인 퀄리티가 아이 수신단에서 셋업 온 홀드 타임에서 1이냐 0이냐를 읽을 수 있는 그 시간의 윈도의 퀄리티를 이제 지터를 줄이는 대로 보기 때문에 제가 이 지터 클래시피케이션 페이지를 갖고 왔습니다. 그리고 지터에 어떤 성분이 있느냐라고 알아야 그걸 줄이지 않겠습니까? 근데 그 중에 반이 여기서 얘기하는 ISI, 크로스터, 뭐, 피리어딕 지터, 이거 다 이거거든요. 아, 이런 내용이 있고, 그리고 또 반이 이제 클락과 아이오 드라이브 서킷에 오는데, 이것도 어떻게 우리가 해야 되느냐고, 보면 온도 낮춰야 되고, 전압 노이즈를 해야 되고, 엑스레이나 우주선이 들어오지 않게 한다든가, 다 그런 게 되겠습니다. 일단 최종적인 퀄리티는 지터에 의해서 결정이 된다. 그 말을 하기 위해서 오늘 계속 지터 얘기를 하고 있습니다. 땡큐, 기영. 네, 감사합니다. 네. 그리고 어, 지터 얘기할 때 결국 이제 제가 여기서 보여드린 것처럼 이런 커브 많이 이제 얻고 뭐 측정이든 시뮬레이션 얻는 거 중요한. 근데 이제 어려운 건 너무 시간이 많이 걸리니까 그 이제 여러 가지 기법들이 사용되는데 그 다음에 이 베스트 오브 커브도 많이 그립니다. 그래서 아, 내가 시스템을 비하를 얼마로 설정해야 되겠는가 뭐 그런 얘기가 나오겠습니다. Now, I would like to move a little bit of different subject which was not covered in the class so far. Surface roughness. As I mentioned before, ISI is coming from high frequency loss. There are two different losses. First one is skin effect loss and second one is uh, dielectric loss. In the skin e case of skin effect loss, uh, if this is a metal, we are assuming that current is induced only at the surface. And at higher frequencies, this thickness of skin depth is decreasing and decreasing. So that's why we have higher loss. But in the theory of transmission line, or when we are calculating surface resistance at high frequency, we are assuming that this surface is perfectly smooth, atomic level smooth. But actually, in PCB or package, in certain degree in on-chip interconnections, and it has certain roughness. Especially in the case of PCB, we are making computer with a minimal cost. We are using the uh, PCB uh, process. Sometimes it is used in package process. And on chip interconnections, I think depending on process, it may have certain degree of surface roughness. Then what actually is happening is that soft current is following through the surface. It is actually following through the surface roughness. That means actual length is increasing. In the case one of the perfect surface, let's assume it has length L1. If we have surface roughness, this L2 is gonna be longer than L1 because the surface current will have to follow the surface curvatures. Because of that, we're gonna have more ISI effect and we're gonna have more jitter. In the textbook or in ideal conditions, we are assuming smooth surface and we may have, we are estimating certain jitter, deterministic jitter, because of ISI, but actual jitter 
might be higher than we expect. One of the cause of that uh, problem is caused by surface roughness. That is what, what is actually happening when we are designing our computers and in their environment. But there is a, okay, thank you. Yeah, I saw the chatting window. This is practical issue, not uh, academic or theoretical issues, but these are what actually are happening regularly in actual product design and manufacturing. I would like to uh, talk a little bit about power supply induced jitter. Next week, next, next two weeks, we're gonna come back to this slide probably at least two to three class hours to talk about power supply noise. Our in power sub, our interconnection ha actually has inductance. If your interconnection length is one millimeter, it usually have one nano Henry inductance. If you have hundred micrometer uh, interconnections, it may have hundred pico Henry or oh. If your interconnection length is micrometer range, it may have femto any range. If high frequency is conducting through this inductor, it may suffer voltage drop because of switching current and switching time. This voltage drop is proportional to current. You probably easily, it could be 100 amps. Switching time could be 10 picosecond. So because of this is divided by dt, it has huge amount of voltage drop, even though you have small inductance. In addition to that, Usually we are placing, there are some capacitance between power line and ground line. If your IO driver is switching from zero to high, high to zero charging and discharging process, because of this capacitance and inductance, you're gonna generate resonance. Because of this resonance, you're gonna have power supply noise. It has certain frequency that's usually uh, coming from resonance frequencies and the peak to peak voltage drop is caused by LDIDT switching noise. So this means that power supply circuit, power supply uh, of your circuit to your IO driver is not a constant voltage. It has certain noise, power supply noise. And it is very frequency dependent. And this frequency is related to resonance of your power supply circuit. Because of this, or also when you, your IO driver is uh, switching, the turn current has to go back to the capacitance. And this ground also has certain capacitance to the chassis. Chassis may be your computer chassis or your smartphone chassis or your GPU chassis, or there might be many different uh, ground. Actually, it is not ground, but we are assuming it is ground. It may have some capacitance and your ground interconnection also has ground inductance. By coupling this inductance and ground capacitance, you're gonna have ground bounce noise. So here you have ground bounce and you have power supply noise and your IO circuit has certain parasitic capacitance. 
between power supply and I.O. Sometimes your PMOS channel, PMOS channel and NMOS transistor has some resistance, channel resistance. Through this parasitic capacitance and channel resistance, your power supply noise will be transmitted and coupled to the I.O. line. Because of that, you're gonna generate another type of jitter. Power supply jitter, I would induce the jitter. And in the industry of uh, semiconductors such as Samsung Hynix or Google or Nvidia, they are fighting very strongly against this power supply induced jitter. And some classes in this semester, I will invite the uh, uh, invited speaker uh, of PhD students who is working on PSIJ. So as I mentioned before, jitter is very important measurement of the quality to quantify the interconnection and your eventual system, clocking system and data system. And one of the element here, I will say periodic jitter that is coming from the power supply and ground design. The problem is that there is no ideal power and though there's no ground. As far as you are using some switching current for IO and because your interconnection have inductance and parasit, as far as you have uh, metals, you have inductance and capacitance and you have resonances. Resonance is our destiny. Power supply noise is our destiny of a uh, digital system. Because of that, PSIJ is our destiny. Yesterday, very famous actress, Kang Suyeon, went to heaven. And Kim Ji Ha, who is very democratic, um, poet, 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 poetry. He went to heaven and you and I will be there and you know, 100 years that, that is being called as our destiny. As far as we are using digital computing, CMOS based digital chip, PSI is our destiny. And how much we will reduce that, that is our role. God will control whether we have PSIJ or not, but our human being as an engineer, an electronic engineer, our responsibility and our job uh, given by the God may be the P deduction of PSIJ. Sometimes in the morning when I driving from my home to school or sometimes in the evening when I go uh, from my office to home, I'm sometimes listening the Catholic channel, Kukdok Bangsong, some pastor is saying like this, so somehow it he affect me. Uh, Hyun, are you there? Or Hyunu, are you there? Thank you, Sunim. Uh, would you shortly talk about this slide, what I'm talking about? Oh, uh, yes. 어, 저희가 항상 이상적으로 파워나 그라운드에는 항상 스테이블한 전압이 걸릴 거라고 예상하는데 어, 실제적으로는 파워나 그라운드의 와이어에 의한 인덕턴스나 아니면 캐패시턴스에 의해서 레조넌스가 발생을 하고 그 레조넌스 그리고 또한 그 버퍼의 각각 트랜지스터의 또 레지스턴스나 아니면 캐패시턴스가 그 생, 생기게 돼서 이제 그렇게 생긴 레조넌스들이 데이터 패턴들에 섞여져 들어가면서 이제 어, 이것 중에서도 아이 다이어그램에서 이제 새로운 지터를 발생하게 된다. 그리고 이 PSIJ가 어, 엔지니어들에게 되게 피할 수 없는 문제로 작용을 하고 있다로 이해했습니다. 와, 내가 사실 영어도 잘 못하고 그러는데 너무 잘 알아듣네. 훌륭한 것 같아. 진짜 훌. 자 좋습니다. 그래서 어, PSIJ가 크, 값은 크진 않더라도 너무 이 데이터 윈도우가 10기가, 100기가 BPS까지 가려면 최종적으로 이게 결정을 할것 같습니다. ISI하고 이게 
예, 그런데 예, 파워 서플라이가 아이디어를 하지 않은 이유가 파워 서플라이 회로에도 플라스틱 C와 플라스틱 L이 있어서 공진이 일으키는 건데요. 지금 얘기하는 PAGIJ를 여러분들한테 자세히 하나하나씩 뜯어가는 거 여기 보면 지금 파워 서플라이 레조넌스 이런 얘기 플라스틱 얘기 많이 하고 이런데 이런 거다 얘기하고 최종적으로 PSI가 어떻게 되느냐가 이번 학기 5월 말까지 제가 여러분들 쭉 끌고 가려고 하는 내용 중에 하나가 메인 내용 중에 하나가 되겠습니다. 그래서 지금 ISI 얘기 많이 했고 지터 얘기 많이 했는데 이제 나 5월에 다른 기간 동안은 계속 파워와 그라운드 얘기를 계속 해보도록 하겠습니다. 파워 그라운드가 문제가 되는 1번이 이제 아까 얘기한 것처럼 전자파가 생겨서 EMI가 생기는 건데요. 이게 이제 주변의 인터페런스 이렇게 해서 어 갑자기 딴 칩보다 이 칩을 썼더니 핸드폰에서 어, LTE의 수신 감도가 떨어지더라. 뭐 이런 얘기 하는 게 이제 EMI고 PSIJ는 이제 데이터 퀄리티를 이제 좌우하는 영향을 보는 게 되겠습니다. I'm going to go 10 more minutes in this class. So um, there are many sources of I diagram discussion. Number one is This is kind of summary of the class in April, impedance mismatch and deflections. And we was talking about crosstalk as well. Uh, in the previous week and today's week, I was talking about loss and ISI. And also we was talking about mode conversion and simultaneous switching noise and clock source skew distribution network will be covered at the following weeks. So I think these are, are very Uh, summary of the sources of I diagram distortion. Now I would like to move on to a little bit of a, a different subject that is called PAM4. So far when I was uh, designing or drawing the I diagram, it is PAM2 level. It has zero level or one level, and data pattern is NRG non d e t e r n to zero. So if data is zero, it has zero. If data has zero, it has zero. If data is changed to one, it has one. It is one, one, something like that. There might be many different type of coding, d e t e r n to zero, non d e t e r n to zero. But this is a typical case of Uh, data patterns when we are sending uh, data. So, uh, so far I, I was saying that this transition is very important. If we have ISI, we're gonna have a slowdown at rising time. If we have simultaneous switching noise, we're gonna have some noises. And if we have so this kind of problem, we're gonna have jitter and it will reduce the timing window. Um, As I mentioned in the previous time, this timing window of I diagram is called unit interval. Some years ago, it could be nanosecond. Now it is becoming less than 100 picosecond. And sooner or later, it's gonna be on 10 picosecond range if you wanna send 100 giga BPS per channel. So because of that, we're gonna have more ISI effect and we're gonna have more PSIJ effect. And if we have fast rising time and fast rising time, we're gonna have more ISI and more PSIJ. So we're gonna have more jitter problems. So second approach is PAM4. Rather than reducing the unit interval, but we are still using the same interval, but we are using four levels, level zero, one, two, three, three. So this is level four, pulse amplitude modulation. So if the input data has OO pattern, it, gonna, it, it will be a level zero. It has a data coding one, zero, one. It's gonna be voltage level will be level one. If the 
data, two bit data is zero one, it, it's gonna be level two. If the two bit data is one one, it's gonna be. So in the previous eye diagram, we had uh, only two levels. But in this case, eye diagram is representing two bit information. Two bit digital information means four different levels. So because this random nature, it may have many different level changes. Sometimes it may have one level changes. Sometimes it may have two level changes. Sometimes it may have three level changes. Unit time window is the same. This is the same, let's assume 100 picosecond, but by having this four level of amplitude modulation and decoding and decoding, we are able to send two more uh, data rates than PAM2 NRG. You remember that because of skin effect loss and dielectric loss, we are suffering more and more loss and at a, if we move at a higher frequencies. So our approach of PAM4 is we are standing here at low frequencies. We are avoiding ISI and PSIJ, but we are dividing voltage level at four different levels. That is called PAM4. Right now, for example, if let's assume we have DDR spec, and I, I remember it's Gen 5 or we are really limited by right now by ISI and PSI, this kind of effect. One approach, then this is the interconnection between DRAM and CPU, and we may go to this pump four. And eventually we have to use the differential signaling, but right now they are using single end signal with two, pump two energy data patterns. But sooner or later, I, I'm strongly believing that we have to use the PAM4 signaling, which actually are using four levels. And eventually, if we go to 100 gigabit PS per line between GPU and memory or CPU to memory, we have to go to differential signaling. Now let's draw an I diagram of PAM4 data pattern. Please pay attention. We may have this data pattern from zero to one to one. This is could be a, one of the worst case data pattern. Another pattern might be level four, level three to level one and level three. So because of that, we have very small eye window. Data pattern has ma many more cases uh, because of the data transition, um, many different type of data transition. Let's take a look at another case from level zero to level two to level one. And another case is level three to level one to level three. This is a, a typical case of a worst case eye diagram. And the third cases could be level three to level two and level zero to level three and level zero. So we're gonna have another eye opening case. Let's take a look at here. We have very discrete crossing point of V reference between level zero and level one. So if we draw the distribution of uh, jitters, we're gonna have three different, many different peaks, probably depending on how we define the worst case data patterns. So here also we have to do the analyze the jitter 
here also we have to analyze the jitter. Here we also have to analyze the jitter. Uh, Jiwon, are you there? Thank you so much. Uh, your palm four have eye diagram. 조금만 한번 말씀해 보실래요? 어, 네. 기존에는 이제 데이터를 전송을 함에 있어서 이제 two level 이제 zero와 one 이두 비트로 이제 데이터를 전송을 하였는데. 데이터의 전송 속도가 빨라짐에 따라 이 유닛 인터벌이 줄어들고 유닛 인터벌이 줄어들면서 이제 PSIJ를 비롯한 지터가 많이 더 심화되기 시작했습니다. 음. 그래서 이제 더한 단계 발전하여서 기존의 데이터 이동 속도는 유지한 채 기존의 2 레벨을 이제 2 비트로 4 레벨을로 확장을 하여서 이제 제로와 원이 아니라 0001011이두 비트를 사용함으로써 4 레벨로 데이터를 전송을 하는 방법이 펜포입니다. 네. 펜포를 사용함에 따라 데이터 속도를 유지한 채더 많은 양의 데이터를 전송하게 되어 될 수가 있게 됐습니다. 네. 그래서 이렇게 제가 보니까 이제 펜포 다음으로 펜 8도 나오고요. 뭐 펜. A, p a 16 이런 게 계속 나올 것 같아요. 여러분들이 이런 얘기 계속 들을 것 같아요. 어, 여러분 DRAM 설계하든 GPU를 설계하든 이런 얘기가 많이 나올 것 같고 그러면 전압이 이게 자꾸 줄어드는 거 아니에요? 이만큼씩, 그죠? 그러니까 볼트 타이밍 윈도우는 운명으로 받아들이고 볼트지 윈도우를 어떻게 전자회로로 어떻게 뭐 증폭시키든 이퀄라이저 하긴 뭐 이렇게 한다는 건데 네, 그런 것 같습니다. 네, 그래서 여기서도 역시 지터력이 되게 중요해질 것이다 이렇게 생각이 듭니다. 자 오늘 uh, this is the uh, thank you this is the end of uh, my class today and on Wednesday I'm going to come back to this issue again and I'd like to move a little bit deeper into the jitter analysis and uh, I I personally believe this is really important. A subject in the in the practical point of view when you are really actually designing your system or your chip, and uh, but it might be a little bit bored to you. But this is one of the most core part of the class. So Wednesday I would like to meet you again, and next week I'm going to start about power supply designs. And let's be patient each other and let's move on. Thank you for your kind of attention and your attendance. See you later. Thank you. Thank you.